So here's a majority of everything that we're going to need to use to install the whip lights onto the Tacoma today. A lot of these items, if not all, are available on Amazon. So if you're curious about prices or availability, just check the links in the description section below as I'll have links to everything that I use in this video today. As far as the whip light kit is concerned from Nylite, they do include two American flags that you can use. The whip lights, these are three foot whip lights. They do come in other sizes. I believe they also have them in four feet length and five feet length. The only reason I'm going with three feet today is because I want to be able to fold these whip lights down whenever I'm not using them. These whip lights do come with a spring base so that way when you're driving it gives you some flexibility and there's also a quick disconnect right here to detach the actual light bar. It's very easy to do and it makes removing the whip lights when not in use extremely easy. Also included with this kit is a remote control so you can change the desired color or pattern of the whip lights. It also comes with a wire harness assembly, which we'll install here in a little bit. Some caps that you can use to cover the whip light when it's disconnected from the base. And it also includes a switch if you want to use a switch to control your whip lights, including all of the necessary wiring for the switch. In addition to what comes with the whip light kit, I also have some zip ties that we'll use in order to secure the wire harness and then some stainless steel hardware that is not included with anything. It's just added hardware that I'm going to use in order to install these brackets, which I found on Amazon. These brackets are actually designed to bolt onto bars for UTV or ATV vehicles and I'm just going to use the front half of the bracket and bolt this bracket up onto my molly panels on the side of the Tacoma because with this bracket, I'm able to take out this locking pin and adjust the angle on which I want my whip lights to be positioned at and store them on the side of the bed of the truck. So by using this bracket, I'll be able to just pull out the locking pin, rotate the bracket, put the locking pin back in and store the whip lights on the molly panels. I'll be using these quick fist clamps on the side of the bed of my truck on the molly panels in order to easily store the whip lights on the side of the bed when I'm not using them. That way it makes it just really easy to store them when not in use and also have access to them when I actually want to run my whip lights. So here's an example of how I mounted the bracket onto the molly panel on my Tacoma. This will allow me to rotate the whip lights once installed and store them on the side of the bed with the molly panels. And as far as mounting the whip lights are concerned, you can get really creative how you want to mount your whip lights. I've seen people mount them onto the side rails of the bed of the truck. I've seen people do a whole bunch of different things. You can technically even take this bracket, drill some holes on the side of the bed right here, take off the tail lamp, and then bolt this bracket up to the side of the bed right here if you wanted to do that. I just really wanted an easy way to store my whip lights when I'm not using them. So this bracket portion of the installation, you just got to get creative with it. You don't have to do it exactly the same way I did, obviously. I'm just showing this as an example of how I'm installing the whip lights on my Tacoma. Here is a deconstructed view on how I've used the hardware in order to mount the bracket onto the molly panels. Obviously we have our bolts right here, our main bracket, and then I have three washers that I use as spacers between the bracket and the molly panel. And then right here would be where the molly panel is. And then I'll have another fender style washer right here along with the lock nut and a regular nut on the back side of the molly panel to bolt everything onto the panel. Now that I have one bracket installed, I'm going to install the base onto the bracket. Here's the base of my whip light. I'm just gonna disconnect it real quick. So that way I can install the base onto the bracket. Got a 19 millimeter nut right here take this off along with the washer and the lock washer. We'll place it onto the bracket. Then we'll add our regular washer. Then we'll add our lock washer. Then I will we'll add our nut. 
and then we'll tighten it down with a 19 millimeter wrench. And now the base is bolted onto the bracket. Now you can see the base of the whip light is bolted onto the bracket. It's really easy to change the angle. When I do have my whip lights out for use, I'm going to have it at this angle right here. And when I store them, I will have it at a horizontal angle like this. And here is a preliminary fitment of the whip lights. They do angle outward a little bit towards the rear and that's just the angle of the bracket. I wanted to be able to make sure that I could store them horizontally. When I angle them out for use, since they're 60 degree angles, that's basically a 120 degree angle right there. Now that I've test fitted the whip lights onto the Tacoma, the next step will be for me to install the passenger side. Afterwards, I'm going to show you how I wire up the wiring harness in order to power up these whip lights. So as far as wiring up the whip lights is concerned, I'm actually going to tap into this trailer lamp switch. And as you can see right here, it has a little diagram of which each pin does in regards for the trailer switch is concerned. And what I want to do with my setup, whenever the whip lights are connected, I want my whip lights to turn on any time that I turn my running lamps or my parking lamps on. So based off of this connector, the top left wire, which is a white wire with a black stripe, is my ground. And my top right wire, which is my running lamp wire, is a green wire on the back side of this connector. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the wiring harness for the whip lights and I am going to connect this red power wire to the green running lamp wire that's on the back side of this trailer connector. And then the black wire is my ground, so I'm going to connect this to the white wire with the black stripe on the back side of this trailer lamp connector. So that way, anytime I turn on my parking lights, the whip lights can be powered on. And with the wiring harness, you see you'll have your little RF transmitter thing about eight foot of cable that can run to each side uh, for both of the whip lights. And then for the wiring harness, you also have these little quick connect wire connectors for the whip lights themselves. They literally just plug in and then you screw them on in order to create a watertight connection at the whip light. Here is a view of the trailer lamp connector from the back side, and I've popped off this uh, little plastic cover for the time being so you can get a better look at the wiring. But as you can see, we have a whole bunch of wires. This green wire is the running lamp wire, which will send power whenever the running lamps are on. And then if we twist this around, this huge fat white wire with the black stripe, that's my ground wire. So if I just connect my red wire to the green wire, and my black wire to this white and black wire, I'll be able to power up the whip lights anytime that I turn on my parking lamps. Once I wire this section up, I'm just going to zip tie all of my excess wiring underneath the bed of the truck over around on this side. I'll guide my two cables, one to each whip light, in between the crack between the tailgate and the bed of the truck. There's plenty of room and uh, should allow me to run the wires to each whip light. 